But first, a poem. Roses are red. I'm getting kind of hefty. That black label package is looking awful smexy. <laughs> and that, my friends, is why I am known as Josh the RV Nerd and not Josh the Bard. We'll leave that one to Mr. William Shakespeare. Uh, behind us, 4,720 pounds in Black Label series. And keep in mind, the specs that you just looked at on screen are specific to the Black Label edition. Things like the GVW and the Dryway are a little bit heavier here as compared to the Standard series. And if you'd like to compare uh, to the Standard series, Guess what, Carol Baskin? We got ourselves one of those already on file. I will leave you a link in the video description to check that out. What we are looking at here is like, if you're like, okay, I want like the smallest thing with a ramp I can get that still has a private walk around bed. That's this guy right here. And in the black label edition, it, it's it, it's a little bit it, it's a little bit of tech smacks. <laughs> it's got some of those nice laminated looks and features without going all the way up into a laminated price point. Now, the one that we're looking at today also has a totally separate option for power stabilizer jacks, but it is kind of cool how you can have this one a little simpler and you can have it a little bit gussied up like you see here. They sort of let you, you know, like Burger King, you get to have it your own way. Um, this model is extremely popular among non-toy hauler enthusiasts, which sounds totally backwards for sure. Um, the, the thing here is that it's just a nice couples camper. It has a giant rear mega dinette that could convert into like a bit of a lounge space. And you can always open up your living space with the help of that ramp patio off the back. And that's what's cool. You get the ease and convenience and the lighter weight of no slide and less upkeep with no slide while still getting potentially the bigger, better living space. Although obviously that's going to be a little bit weather dependent. Um, this one, it can really float a lot of different roles. And that's what's nice about it. You can have one RV that could be a couple's camper. It could be a, a smaller, more conservative toy hauler, potentially half ton towable, depending on the vehicle. It should fit most tow package half tons, but it can also function as a very good guest camper uh, in case you feel like having some friends or some family with you for a weekend, but maybe not all the time. You don't need to go to, into a bunkhouse. It really does a little bit of everything. And I think that's what I like about this one. And I'd love it if you left me a couple comments as we go. What are your favorite little aspects about it? What would you change given the opportunity? So like I said, we're going to get to see this one a couple different ways today. And the reason I want to showcase it in this sort of like broken up fashion is due to the, the feedback that I get from people who actually purchase this. This model, interestingly enough, about half the time is purchased by people who have absolutely nothing like a motorcycle. There's just a lot of people out there I've learned who are like, I want a, a private bedroom. I want that nice big refrigerator. I, I want decent living space, but like, I don't want to slide out. And I wish I could get one of those rear patios without being a toy hauler. Well, I mean, I get it that it is kind of still technically a toy hauler, but it still checks all of those boxes. What we have here is just a giant, like, six adult-sized rear m -m 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 mega dinette. And what's awesome about this is the way that this one fixture can do a bunch of different things for us. And a big part of what makes it work is the fact that on this... Uh, the, uh, I'm going to call them the steering contest benches right here. You have that big free floating elliptical base table. Now I haven't folded it down. I'm just doing kind of a quick demonstration here. And it showcases the fact that this bench where we are sitting currently putting you in the driver's seat, this is definitely going to be like your primary entertainment seat right here. Um, and actually it's one of the cool things that I like about this floor plan is you can really kind of fold up or down as much or as little as you really want to. And I think this is maybe in a, the best way to demonstrate that, just the fact that everything moves. And, and apologies if suddenly we're greeted by a glare like the sun gleaming off my balding male pattern five head over here, which that's what happens when you have a forehead and you start losing hair, you gain a five head. I would probably, for the most part, would just like me and my wife, if we were the ones camping, this is how I think I would use it. I would leave this sort of like the living room sofa. If we added a little TV over here, it should always be available. Um, because you can't really put a super massive screen over here, I don't think that bench is really going to get in the way. I don't think I've ever really looked at it from that perspective before doing one of these videos. And then over here, I would bring along like a small little pair of like folding stools or something. And I would have just a cool little outdoor 
place to set down, you know, my own food, drinks kind of situation. I, this would just be, this is why toy haulers to me are so cool. And again, you don't even have to use this like a toy hauler. We have a lot of couples who specifically like this model because they say, you know, we get all of that extra space here. Like we feel like we get a bigger trailer when we get there without needing like a giant three quarter ton truck or something to haul something around. Now, of course, both of the benches do fold up to get out of the way. So if you need maximum loading space, you can do that. And speaking of which, you'll notice there's tie downs along either side. There's another pair of tie downs you're just not able to see right now under that bench since it's in the down position. I'm pretty sure you folks understand that. And then we've got, uh, you know, D-ring loading spaces all the way up to the front here. Now, just to drop it on screen one more time and put it right up in your face. We've got the uh, uh, the random sort, not random, I'm sorry, the miscellaneous garage measurements that Cherokee's been kind enough to provide. Now, inevitably, someone's going to want to know the height from this to that, to the left thing, to the right thing. There's a million measurements we could possibly get you here. If there's something specific you need, call us and, and uh, you know, say, hey, here's the widget, the whiz bang, the measurement that I need, or here's the toy that I have, here's its dimensions. Uh, what, what does the RV measure against so that we can check for it? Because there's this, I've tried to catch every measurement I can think of making these videos and inevitably someone always wants one more. Now, one of the key things on this right here is the centralized air conditioner. The Little Brother 18RR Grey Wolf actually does not have that because it's, an, it's a one room Grey Wolf because this has private bathroom and in front of that, the privacy uh, of the uh, closing door bedroom, they wanted to make sure that air conditioning was gonna run through the ceiling to keep everybody comfortable. They didn't want you sleeping in a hot box and sweating to the oldies like Richard Simmons, basically. And also, something else that's pretty cool, that's a 15,000 BTU air conditioner. And yeah, the uh, the pretty cool thing was an intentional pun. Fight me. <laughs> um, oh, where do we want to go over here? Let's start checking out the kitchen space. On the way, though, one of the neat things Cherokee does is their converters are lithium friendly. So uh, there's a little switchy flick in there. If you want to convert that over to lithium mode from, say, like lead acid or AGM mode, you can do that. And this does have the uh, Cherokee Juice Pack, which is a simple uh, battery tending solar package. It's not a big monster. You're going to spend your life off grid running the air conditioner kind of solar package. But that's kind of the cool thing about this RV. It, it does a lot of things very nicely at a little bit more of a conservative uh, price point and uh, weight tag as compared to what I would call a true toy hauler with, again, calling this a crossover. Now, one of the big things to consider on here is inside of the RV, it is six and a half foot tall, but that doesn't mean you can shove something that's six and a half foot tall in here. And the reason for that is the, the framework, the steel structure around the ramp patio space. Now, it's, it's a little more spacious than it looks right here, and yeah, okay. So it's gotta be about 6'3 through that opening. You lose a couple inches when you actually go into the main cabin, but that is a really key thing here. Again, I call this a crossover. I don't call this a true toy hauler. Big side-by-side -side ATVs probably need not apply here. But if you've got a motorcycle, kayaks, e-bikes, uh, regular bikes, uh, yeah, that was regular, by the way. Get that from my dad. Um, <laughs> funny, this is so unrelated, but... Um, it's just one of those things from my childhood. We would go to the Dairy Queen drive-thru. He would get a chocolate shake. To this day, that's my dad's just favorite little dessert treat. Just a simple chocolate shake. What size would you like? Regular. Now, my dad doesn't normally talk like that, but for whatever reason, every time we went to Dairy Queen, regular. So to this day, when I go to Dairy Queen with my daughter, regular. <laughs> now, I always try to include something new, something maybe thought provoking that maybe I haven't talked about before. And I don't know if I've done a good job covering this. These folding benches are all free floating cushions, which is kind of nice because if you're going to use just one in sleeper mode, which by the way, uh, we're going to revisit this RV with the uh, ramp closed in just a few minutes in what I call road mode to see it in guest sleeper mode. But if you're only going to use one of them, you can actually double up the cushion right here to make it a little more accommodating for your guest. But if you're going to fold the benches up and down to, to like load your stuff, you do need to get all of the cushions out of the way. Frankly, I just put them up on the bed for transit. They're just 
cushions. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. You can just walk them right in the bedroom door. It's not hard. But an extra thing to think about there, they're not rollover like sleeper type sofas. So, uh, you know, just, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever talked about that. I don't know if you care. Hopefully you do. Maybe you don't, not sure. Funny thing here, on the black label edition, we get those smexy tinted windows, but like that tall bedroom window there, that hallway window, those don't open for airflow on black label, which I find interesting. Now, another thing here, we're gonna talk about road mode in a minute, uh, but it's easier to show it from this direction. When you have stuff loaded, you can always just walk right over here into the bathroom. And I tell you what, that toilet is fluffy friendly. There's good leg room. There's hip and shoulder room. It works well. Um, you've got the uh, fumigator fan up top here, which is the kind that can really move some airflow if need be. And uh, as is the case in almost any Cherokee, they're very good about giving us the bigger medicine cabinet so you can get the extra bottle of Lipitor in there. <laughs> and uh, you can actually wash your hands and face in this thing without you know having to hit your head on anything. And these are all sealed edge press membrane counters outside of the kitchen. Now in the standard series, which I'll leave you a link for that in the video description if you want to compare, by the way, the corrugated sided series, um, you'll have this, the sealed edge counters all the way through. In black label, in the kitchen, we get an upgrade. Now with six and a half foot ceiling, uh, my head is in bubble trouble over here uh, at my 6'3 height with my boots and hat, but eh, not bad. But what I like about this is it used to be black label edition was really only visible outside and in the kitchen. Now, every single room has something done with it over here uh, for Black Label Edition, whether it's just this insane over-the-top bathroom fixture with that uh, separate little ET phone home uh, back sprayer handle right there, or when we get up into the bedroom, it's those handy-dandy blue and white two-stage reading lights, and then, of course, the Tribble Pillow, which is probably supposed to represent, like, the wolf fur, gray wolf, get it? <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm just trying to entertain myself over here. When you've done thousands of these RV videos like I have, you start finding little ways to keep yourself uh, entertained so that you don't go crazy, although maybe I started that a little bit too late. Um, but you've got a normal, fully enclosed private front bedroom. That being said, that is is the short queen that is a camp queen and if you go to a true queen it'll fit but buddy you're gonna be doing the butt scoot boogie to get around that thing right there and if you feel like it the tv bracket that we saw in the living room is matched here in the bedroom is matched on the outside of the rv so what's actually kind of cool is you could use one screen in multiple areas of the camper now like i said i want to take a look at this thing in road mode, but also simultaneously, I think almost in like guest mode. And I, I hope you appreciate all the extra little looks at these things and all these different forms. Takes a little bit of time, takes a little bit of wrestling. It ain't fun, but at least on a cold day, it's keeping me warm. <laughs> now, I'm sure you've noticed the little bit of dancing uh, queen curtain situation we got going on back here. Uh, I do still have the ramp down. It's in the open position, but I thought, hey, what? not a bad opportunity to kind of showcase where if you are inside and there's just sun beating off the back of this thing, you can pretty much blot that out. They do dance and wiggle a little bit. But like I said down here, that six-person mega dinette, well, it folds down into one heck of like a, a big guest sleeper that I think two adults could do pretty nicely on that. But I also call this a good buddy camper. Well, that's where that comes in. I call that the buddy bump. Or, let's say you've got a couple little grandkids, you're trying to keep them separated. Uh, maybe, you know, boy, girl, grandkid, you want them to have their separate private sleeping spaces. I understand something like that. And then, uh, once again here, you've got the uh, option of always rolling up those um, little dancing queen partitions, as for some reason I seem to be calling them. Uh, oh, I know why. My, uh, my wife watched Mamma Mia the other night, so I've got ABBA music stuck in the back of my head right now. That must be what's rolling around in my noodle. Anyway, you get the idea. It's like a screen wall. And you know what? I'm doing it different today. We're, we're calling audibles here, ladies and gentlemen. I always start at the front of these things, and I figured today, let's work our way around the other side. Since I figure the patio space is kind of where you want to hang out, why don't we start over here? Um, again, you don't necessarily have to use it as a patio. You've just got those easy release uh, cables right there, which <laughs> obviously you're going to want to drop down if you want to use it as a ramp loading space. And unless you won't be like my Uncle Gary and just say, nope, 
I can just pop me a wheelie and run it up there. Um, that being said, Uncle Gary is currently recovering from his third concussion uh, this year, so uh, maybe don't do that. Now, up top, um, at right near the roof line, you see a little antenna sticking out. That's actually the LCI Insight Bluetooth camera that is built into this thing. It is uh, an in-motion observation camera, and some recent tech updates have drastically improved how nicely that works and how easy it is to utilize that feature. Um, as I mentioned, a totally separate standalone option from Black Label are the power stabilizer jacks that we've outfitted on this one here today. That being said, I really like to pair them up with Black Label because it just kind of feels like if you're going to go up to the fiberglass, it's sort of nice just to have everything be push button easy, you know. That being said, on the standard series, the manual corner jacks will use the exact same drill bit adapter as the Cherokee Quick Jack that we'll talk about actually when we get up to the tongue space. Now I got myself screwed up because I am going backwards today. Right there we got ourselves the leash latch. You can keep your four-legged furry friends uh, from running around the campsite. And just as a courtesy of the other people, if you are in a park, um, if you've got, uh, you know, Barky Bark and the uh, Funky Bunch of a dog there, it is nice to maybe have them in the RV rather than barking at every passerby as they go. Just a little common campsite courtesy here. Ooh, a little bit of wind picking up. Hold on. <laughs> Realized I forgot to plug in my microphone. I call him Mike Tyson. <laughs> M-I-C. Never mind. It's not that funny. Um, remember how we talked about uh, TV hookups on the inside of the RV again? Matching bracket right there. And holy crap, Batman. Look at, <laughs> look at the fiberglass. You can literally see me wave at you. I am tempted to take the hat off. I don't think you're ready. They, uh, it's sort of like if you, you know, put two phones near one another on speakerphone and they start like feedbacking. I'm afraid that might happen here. Now that is a uh, one of those glass front doors right there, which I think just looks awesome on the black label edition. Remember, you can't really see into it during the day. At night when it's backlit, you can see through that a little bit. Black label edition does also bulk up and add things like that extra uh, floodlight over here on the campsite of the RV. And I love that little frosting on the uh, bottom of the doors right there. Even a little bit different on Grey Wolf versus Black Label Edition. You can see that you've got your gas grill quick connect right down there in front of that wheel uh, beside those stable steps there. And the underbelly of this is enclosed at the uh, areas where the holding tanks are present. It's not a fully insulated, enclosed, heated, protected belly or anything like that. But where your tanks are, you know, the bulk of your plumbing where it would be exposed, thankfully is going to be a little bit protected from uh, debris. Now, one of the cool things here is we have those nicer protected hinges on these baggage doors. And in black label, we get upgraded to the magnetic hold bags, which makes getting into this compartment far easier. I know it looks funny with the spare tire just sort of hanging out here in the pass-through compartment, but there's not really another spot on this camper to like mount a spare tire. Theoretically, you could do things like tongue mounts or something like that, or you could carry it in the garage or in the bed of the vehicle or whatever works for you. So, you know, there are potential alternatives, but in terms of like, there's no bumper on the back, there's a ramp door. It's not like you could put a tire back there. Black Label Edition, again, upgrades us to that power tongue jack I mentioned earlier. And if you are curious what I meant about the Cherokee Rapid Jack, take a look at this in eight seconds up and down. Uh, the standard series Cherokee, uh, you know, with a little drill that everybody probably has laying around, you can pretend you're NASCAR pit crew driver. And again, on the standard series Cherokee or a black label without the optional um, stabilizer jack upgrade here, power jacks as it were, can't even think right now. Um, you know, you could do the same thing there. The uh, nose of this is not fiberglass like the sidewall skin of the trailer. That's actually an extra thick aluminum, which is kind of cool. The uh, uh, solar juice pack panel right on top, right at the, uh, the nose area, um, again, helps keep that battery topped off so that when you need to hit those the, the awning button, the stabilizer jacks, that tongue jack, it's going to be there, it's going to be charged up, it's going to be ready for you. Now, right over here, amidships, directly below the Gray Wolf label, are a couple boring things to talk about, but a couple extremely useful features. And that is the black tank flush uh, hookup, as well as the full outside shower. And this does have a single sewer outlet on here. Now, Gray Wolf, as compared to like, say, a big full-on toy hauler wolf pack, um, this is, again, a little bit of a crossover. It's a little bit smaller. And one of the things there is it does ride lower to the ground, which is nice because it's not as tipsy. 
uh, you know, you have a lower overhead clearance. But if you have like a really steep driveway or something like that, it can pose a bit of a problem. One of the really cool things that's not very well known or documented though, is they come with uh, two axle hanger adjustment positions and they come from the factory in the lowest riding position. Meaning if you wanted to, let me get you up here a little bit closer, you could gain about an inch and a half of ride height off of this thing right here. Although keep in mind, your axles are always the lowest common denominator. It's not an independent suspension system. And you know what, while we're down here, the uh, handy little sewer hose caddy, because outside storage is limited on these toy hauler jobs, it's really nice. You don't gotta go finding a special spot for the stinky slinky. So thank you very much for joining us once again, everybody. Uh, if you appreciate where we, we show you the good with the bad, like, yes, it's a nice private bedroom, but it's a camp queen. That, that fair information, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'd love to catch you on the next one. And again, I'll leave you some links in the description where you can see a couple little brothers to this, a few other things in a similar class or the standard series, whatever works for you. Because they come a little bit bigger, they come a little bit smaller. We got all of them in terms of toy haulers here at England RV. <laughs> so take care, stay safe, have fun. I need to quit rhyming everyone.